Hello! Hello! Uh, this is Dan. And this is Chris. And uh, welcome back. As you can see, we are taking a bit of time in something new uh, today. Uh, what are we playing today, Chris? Uh, today, we're taking a crack at um, a game that's a little game that I find to be quite endearing called Game Dev Tycoon. Kind yeah, of very all much those so. times in your life you thought about... Yeah. Um, Man, I wish such and such game existed. Well, you can't create that game, but you can create the letters that would represent it. And <laughs> people can judge you for it. Yes, it is quite uh, disheartening, or can be, uh, this game. When you create the game that you thought would always be perfect, you put it out there, and then Game Informer gives you a four-star rating, which I don't think they even actually do. Right. So... Anyway, so this is Game Dev Tycoon. Uh, as you can see here on the screen, it's a business simulator uh, where you are uh, start as a small uh, game development studio. And uh, you have a certain stretch of time in which you try to turn yourself into a, a real power. I don't know how far we're going to follow this. We're going to see how interesting this can be. But uh, let's get started. Yeah. So we have to give the company a name. Bill Sa. What? Philsoft. Philsoft. <laughs> oh god, is Philbert going to be a running theme in all of our games? Well, at least until we're done with the Quest for Glory series. Yeah, we probably. can leave Quest for Glory, but I don't think we can leave Philbert. And is Philbert going to be our head programmer? Well, why else would it be called Philsoft? <laughs> Although that right. doesn't reflect well on Phil, now does it? Well, you know, he, he is a bit of a showman, a little self-involved. What do I want to be? A hero. So. I don't know. What's Philbert's last name? Oh, God, we've never named him. I don't think it's Quasar, though. Uh, <laughs> Philbert Kubert? <laughs> that's it. It doesn't matter what else we come up with. That's the name. So you've done it. We might. Now, what does he look like is the question. Is he a he? You know, <laughs> he could be she. Philbert is all things to all people. <laughs> now, I just gotta say, the customization options in this game blow me away every time. <laughs> <laughs> I clearly you we can need to be go an with Asian the best, dude, right? A white dude, a black dude, and that's it. And you can wear various types of nerdy clothes. I think we need the vest. I think the vest is a... Yeah. What would you call that, you know? Well, based on Quest for Glory, I could say this is the yeah, closest yeah, yeah. one. That this is the actual Filbert who created Filbert that we play in Quest for Glory as a D&D &D character. Ooh. Interesting. So, all right, so here we go. Do we wish to unlock the hints? We'll play blind. All right, here we go. We're just gonna do what we want to do. Is this the expanded version? Uh, I don't know. We'll have to find out. All right. All right. So first off, we gotta start a new project. Uh, Right-click on the screen to develop a new game. So as you can see, we are starting a long time ago, and we've already spent one week doing exactly nothing. We're already in week two. You can see up there in the top right of the screen. Yeah, the time goes by so quick. <laughs> it's almost <laughs> unnerving. Though maybe it makes sense. Maybe we literally spent that week thinking, okay, I'm going to make a game. So what are, what are our various or topics? We spent a week wondering if we made a giant mistake by naming <laughs> our company Philsoft. <laughs> we cannot possibly have made it. Philsoft cannot <laughs> fail. I'm guaranteeing you now. Oh, I'm not saying it'll fail because might even be popular because of it <laughs> all right so you get into the video game industry because you have a thing you want to make and then you get there and you find out that you can't make that thing <laughs> because the technology does not exist what is Dan what is that thing I don't know where you're going with this uh, we <laughs> the ultimate game writing's <laughs> block naming games <laughs> Achievements right from the beginning. I like it. We're so good at this. All right, well, first, first, I think we need to look at topics. Uh, if you have the expanded content, we don't even know what kind of game we can make yet. Yeah. All right, you are not doing the expanded content because it's starting with these. Uh, you later unlock other things that the game can be about. 
I love that, that we have a, we're very lucky. We have the difference between space and sci-fi. Yeah. You know, you might be right about that, actually. Usually RPGs open pretty early. That's weird. How about a good racing game? I mean, we're in the 80s. Right. Late 80s. Were there we're, good racing games in the 80s? Pole position, dude. <laughs> okay. Don't so judge. we're expanding on the definition of good. <laughs> it was fun. <laughs> all right, so for racing, now you can see what genre would be in. Like, if it's an action game, then it's all about, you know, high high tension going. If it's a simulation, then that's more of your Gran Turismo making it look the way it is. What I was don't that know why game way back in the day that our neighbors used to play? Like um, Street Rod. Street, Street Rod. Rod. Where, where Street you, yeah, Rod. where you could race other people. Uh, Buy cars and soup them up. That was almost an adventure game. The racing part was actually really secondary. Yeah. To working on the cars and increasing their value. Well, let's make that then. The racing simulation and the platform. We have the option of the G64, obviously a Commodore uh, equivalent, or in the PC. Um, and at this point, uh, as you can see, the Commodore 64 uh, actually has a significantly better market share. These are also some of the highest. Also, oh, another thing to pay attention to is dev cost. Uh, in order to develop for the Commodore, uh, you need to pay 20000 straight up, which cuts in pretty significantly to our cash on hand. Yeah, and I don't think the dev cost is... Um, I think it's different enough that it doesn't offset the market share difference. Mm -hmm. So that's a very... Particularly with the knowledge that the Commodore is going away. At this point, it seems, this is right at the end of the Commodore era. Um, and so anyone who knows video game history, as I do, mainly from having played this game, uh, <laughs> knows that that platform is going away eventually. So now we need to name it. Yes. Well, it's simulation. So we're doing the building track. Um... Gilbert's Garage. I was thinking more like this. Pro Street Racer. Yeah, that. Yeah, that does sound more like a simulate, like a like a, a racing simulator. Right, you're professional, but you're not NASCAR. You're a street racer. Yeah. Sounds good. All right. So no, we probably don't want it to be text based. <laughs> um, you're, you're also seeing the cost <laughs> in a text based. I like it. simulator. <laughs> I want to shift into second. <laughs> so I have to type it out. <laughs> shift to second. There is a tree coming up. Turn left. <laughs> It'd be thrilling. Well, we didn't choose an action title. All right, we'll do it this way. All right, we start our development. Uh, Filbert has never done this before, so he's a level one designer. But we're off to a good start. Now, this is, you know, what do we emphasize in our game creation? Well, as a simulation, I feel like engine is the most important. Mm -hmm. uh, engine and gameplay, I think, will be high. Story and quest will be minimal. Okay. And you can see these things are going to be... Uh, I, fa I would put story and quest all the way down. Okay. It, they, and as you can see, it never completely goes away. Right. Uh, there's always some emphasis, emphasis put on it, but no one cares about the story in a racing simulator. You just want more cars. All right, and so now we've got, we've gotten started. Those little bubbles represent uh, our process, our and also soul. the research gives us the ability. It's how much of our uh, experience we can then apply to learning new things. All right, so in the simulator, um, yeah, no one's going to be talking. Level design of the tracks probably pretty important, and the AI of the other drivers look good. I think I'd put a little bit more into level design, but not too much. Yeah, I think that should be fine. Now you can see um, design versus technology. Uh, the difference there is design is about emphasizing, um, you know, how, how things look, how things read. Uh, a company like BioWare would have a very high design score, whereas technology is more about, you know, the technical expertise. So. Yeah. Uh, so you let's can see. also see um, bugs just automatically go in uh, to the game, and we'll have to sort those out at the end before we sell it. So we're going for high graphics, reasonable sound, and world design minimal here. 
Yeah, not empty, because we're interacting with this world. Alright, now, now before we finish, we give him time to work out the bugs, and then... In that stage, he can occasionally add more bubbles to other things, too, but... Oh, right. we're gaining experience. Yeah, this just shows all of his basic abilities, and they'll go up as we do more and more games. I and so, I, I've never figured out why you would actually trash a game at this point. I think if you did it entirely as a learning experience, but, I mean, give yourself a... Like, if you figure I mean, you've that, already spent the money to make it. I think that's if you figure the negative reviews aren't going to... Like, the hit to your reputation just isn't going to be worth Let's it. see what happens. That's actually not bad as a starter. Alright. Wow. Filbert had a dream. 6.5 for Pro Street Racer. Alright, let's see so how... What do we, uh... <laughs> Phil Soft, a newcomer at the... <laughs> Oh, with it's such a good start, Philsoft is sure to gain fans quickly, if nothing else. All right, now as you saw, our technology options were pretty limited here. Eventually, we're going to want to learn. Oh, generating a game report is a thing you can do uh, to do sort of follow-up research on the game that you did. It can give you a little insider information on what you did right and what you did wrong. Um, I always think running a game report is worthwhile. So what else do we want to look into? Medieval, huh? Oh, and you see that 50 RP for custom gain engine? We're going to need to do that if we're going to make any kind of advanced game eventually. Yeah. We're on the charts at number 33. So we've almost already made back our costs. Definitely made back the cost on the game, but almost made back cost on time. Mm -hmm. And now we're there. It is an important milestone in the history of Philsoft. The first game? Yes, that often... It's a good start. Alright, well, let's make a new game. Or do you want to generate the report? Yeah, do the report. It's, it, it also generates research, which isn't always good to have. It gives you tips on what you did right and what you did wrong. And, and clearly we did a fair amount right there, given that we're just a level one coder. Racing and simulation, great combination. World design, not important. And PC simulation is a good platform genre match. So, uh, meaning that simulation games do better on the PC. All right. So, what's our new topic? Uh, should 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 we go pirate? Well, that's a bold choice, Dan. How many successful pirate games do you know of? <laughs> Tales of Monkey Island, dude. They used to define the adventure genre. Yeah. For those people who were not Sierra gamers like us. Okay. Well, that's a RPG then. Or adventure. I think either would work. We'll In fact, adventure. What do you think you would call Sid Meier's Pirates? Would you call that a simulation? Yeah, I guess I would. All right. So, and what are we going to call our pirate adventure? Arg. No. Um, <laughs> you name this one. I kind of named the last one. Okay. Um, uh, high Seas Adventure. Kind of going with the type of names that games got in this era. All right. Look good. Looks good to me. Stick with the graphics. All right, so now in an adventure game, story and quests are going to be hugely important. I would argue more so than gameplay. Really? Yeah. Okay. Um, whereas engine would be minimal. Not not all the way at zero, but yeah. Somewhere around there? Because mm -hmm. this, I mean, this is all like walk around type of thing. All right, so... Dialogue's up. Artificial intelligence, we don't really need. And uh, level design. Yeah, 
That looks good. I like it. This is also, it's almost the opposite type of game from what we just did with the and racer. You can see because of our choices, design is way, way up. technology. Mm -hmm. Pro Racer doubled our money. Yep. Well, 21,000 units. Right. Um, so, world design. Yeah. Uh, graphics, I'd put middling. Graphics and sound sort of equal okay. in the middle would be my call here. I, I would be open to disagreement, though, if you did. No, I mean, I was just going to put graphics a little lower than sound just because of maybe. I the figured that we're still we're working in, with but... basic sound. So we're still working with boopy doo doo boop. And so there's just really only so much we can do. We're still working with basic graphics. <laughs> but I guess that doesn't. <laughs> really matter in the time mm -hmm. you put into stuff and unlike sound graphics can actually get better as you level up um like you level up different graphics engines so it's not enough to just have the new tech you have to know how to use it um i remember when we first played the first um ncaa game for the 360 and the graphics were just awful you remember that mm -hmm. like everyone just looked like mutants as you can see, we're sort of, you know, leveling out between the two. We're on yeah. the verge of leveling up, of leveling Filbert up in general. Yep. So while he's doing that... Oh. Uh, okay. Okay. And you know, I think this has to be one of my biggest complaints about this game, is pretty much they all stay around the same level and mm -hmm. make you have a kind of a specific number, you know, something 0.5 mm -hmm. or something. And yeah. there's no like random time where the guy at Star Games gives it a 9 and everyone else basically pans it. Yeah, when it's like perfect for the guy who happened to be reviewing it, yeah. That doesn't happen as much. Doesn't I've never seen it. Happen. So the Go Govador sixty four is steadily outselling the PC. Take that, PC elite. Ah, <laughs> uh, back when the Commodore ruled everything. Uh, spoiler: it doesn't. <laughs> Good combination. Dialogues are good. Engine not so much. I mean, pretty much PC matches well with all genres. Mm -hmm. uh, well, let's get a new game going. Yeah. Alright, what what uh what, what what topic are we gonna go with this time? I pushed us to pirate last time, so whatever you want to do. Yeah, let's go sci-fi action. All right. Keep it to the PC. All right. I changed my mind. Sci-fi RPG. Nice. Yeah, we'll go to our bread and butter here. All right. What should we? What should we call it? I named the last one. <laughs> yes. For the record, we are probably at some point going to Let's Play Mass Effect in this. Yeah, we might get so excited when they put a release date on Andromeda <laughs> that we just go for it. It's cheap enough on Steam. Yeah. Oh, I already have it. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, so definitely story. Yeah. I think we need a little bit more engine than on Adventure because you figure there's going to be combat in an RPG. Yeah. Maybe something like that. I don't know. I feel like I'd level engine and gameplay out. And feel free to tell me I'm full of it on any of these. This is more your game than mine. So. Yeah, I do have 31 hours in this game. 
kind of redonkadonk. Um, this is pretty good, yeah. actually. I'd bump up artificial intelligence again because there's going to be combat. Right, but pretty scripted combat. In an 80s RPG? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, later on, when we can have, like, RPG adventure, when we can mix genres, that'll work better, I think. I actually have the entire uh, um, Ultima series on good old games, if we ever want to try that out. Go That'd really be fun, because I don't think I've played any of them. Older school. Like, that. it actually takes a little learning. Like, the system is not intuitive. Well, hold on. Japanese company Ninvento moving in, planning to launch its own home gaming console. Ninvento is widely known for the successful game Dinky King. And this we'll was at, this is this is also pretty legit because following the collapse of Atari, everyone figured home video gaming was just kind of a fad um, that had gone away. Yeah, and then Nintendo raised an entire generation of kids so this is the best designed game we've had yet let's see what we think of it. so an interesting oh let's get our reviews first before we talk about the interesting thing okay we just can't win with star games they usually inform them Whoa! Our first eight. Alright. Another 6.5. We're up to a good amount of research, but we don't have any technology to put into a new engine. Yeah. I don't think you need any for the first one, do you? I think first you make the engine and then you learn how to make things for the engine. Unless I'm wrong. Maybe no, wait till we level some around. stuff up. Wait until we level some stuff up and then... Oh, a money option. This is basically take programmer work to make money. Um, which I've never found to be worthwhile. Well, I've always used it for research. If I want to do a little thing to get a little bit more research to bump me over. Oh, does it work as research? I'd never noticed that. Yeah. Okay. So an interesting thing about this game, while we're uh, waiting for stuff to hash out, is they actually released a hacked version of it the moment they released the real one. Uh, this is the game developers did this. Um, only You could only get so far in before uh, pirates started killing your sails. And, and so it was actually pretty brilliant because there were no real hacked versions because everyone figured they already had the torrent. And so it just turned into this great little comment. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm excited about Ninvento. Oh, did you just research the new engine? I did. I had just agreed with you that we should wait to level everything up first before we do that. Ah. Sorry. <clears throat> Doesn't it autosave? Could we go back to the release of the last game? Ah, we'll have to do it again anyways. Okay. And we just called it Custom Game Engine? Well, we didn't create something. We we researched the ability to oh, create. Oh, we haven't created the image. Oh, I see. I'm with you now. We're on the same page. All right, let's make a game. Let's see All what right. should we do? You this pick about. the topic. All right, uh, let's go medieval. Um, let's go see medieval action let's go for a medieval action game for the PC and let's call it um, high joust man you're pretty high over there <laughs> <laughs> Starting with a bug, not a good sign. All right, so it's action, so story not all the way down. I think I would have engine and gameplay, I mean, engine and story medium, and then gameplay all the way up. Okay. 
You seem uncertain. Uh, no, no, I think gameplay is a good choice for an action game. All right. And yeah, we're going to want decent AI, dialogues, iffy, and level design. Yeah, I think that's a good. That's good. Yeah, a little down. I mean, it's a jousting game. Mm hmm. <laughs> Pretty much it's just going to be a hedge. But I want it to be a very well designed hedge. Yeah, right. We're talking Age of Camelot kind of hedges. <laughs> Well, we're, we're doing okay. We haven't had the big bomb buster, but maybe high joust will be that. Uh, it usually doesn't happen until you... So world design, don't need too much. Graphic and sound. Put everything into graphic and sound. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. If nothing else, this will be a good learner. I'm a little nervous that technology's still behind here. Yeah, I, it's because we're not as good at it. Uh, we've had a couple design heavy games. Well, we're still we're high. Just, we're just better at designing. Bam. But we've leveled up across the board. The next game will be significantly better. See, now we're getting some stuff here. Game tutorials, mono sound. And those are all stuff we're going to want to research before we build the engine. But you also see, also for for the for the engine bits, you need to pay money, and I've never been quite sure why that is. To research something, You're like if we're writing our own engine, why are we paying for it? Hey, that's a good start. This is gonna be good. Bam. Another eight. Yeah. All right. I think we days got days. They played it for days. They don't just say that. No. <laughs> I think we got one more game to make, and then we'll call it for this episode. All right. We'll make a game report. Real quick. But hi, Jal. Also is doing well. I want to point out that apparently we love Pong. Yeah. And also, I'm pretty sure that's a DeLorean under the blanket. Pretty sure it is. Great combination, dude. Just, just top notch. Do we want to research a new uh, topic? Uh... Because the only one we haven't done yet is space, and we have done sci-fi. Right. So we should do it. Space strategy. All right. I'm going outside the box here. Well. Are we going to, for a strategy game? We're going to put a strategy game? Yeah, on I'm rethinking that. <laughs> but I want to go uh, hard on the Nintendo. You'll also notice the license cost is significantly up. Um, for the TES, but it's got... Well, these don't have license costs. These are development costs. No. Oh. Development costs is still high, but you have to do a one-time 80k fee. Yeah, that's right. To get into the game. So I want to go hard on the TES. So this we're basically doing for the experience. So, so what are we going to... A space action. Sort of a Galaga type thing. Yeah, that's a great idea. So, we will call it, uh, I don't know, um, what's the name of the guy, Flash Gordon? Yeah. What could we call it, not Flash Gordon, but Flash Gordon? Phil Barton. Bill Starbart. <laughs> there we go, our first author insert. Oh, pick genre. Action. Right? Do Is it. What I was doing, action. Oh, I pressed it twice. That's Keep fine. unchecking it. Yeah. <laughs> Here we go. 
Now this is going to be pretty similar to High Joust. It's an action game, but I'm going to turn down the story and turn up the engine. I think the other way around. So maybe I should have made it an adventure game. If it's going to super... Yeah, because we made it action, I gotta go this way. Sometimes the game doesn't understand your vision for why you make the choices you make. <laughs> it's like, no, action just doesn't work. And you're like, well, fuck you. <laughs> so it, it seems to believe that level design is pretty important. Yeah. Uh, and AI... Actually, I would argue that level design... Well, too late now, but that level design would be the most important. Really? No. We're probably no. dealing with levels. Yeah, you're probably right. Probably just a whole bunch of sprites on the screen. Not a lot of choices they make there. Then again, if our artificial intelligence blows people away, like feeling like the sprites are actually hitting you. I'll yeah, maybe maybe we change the video game industry. We do something new. That That's the thing that always kind of bugged me. I always thought that if you put a whole lot of really successful uh, games on a platform, that that platform's... But you can't really affect how the platforms are doing. And I thought, you know, if we're putting up, out a bunch of really good software for, like, the Tinvento here. Oh, a new tech record. That'll help. Well, except late in the game when you can make your own console. Yeah. You can affect that a little bit with your games. All right, let's see how Phil Starbarton does. First nine. Oh, oh! It thought about Another it. Other nine. It thought about it. This is gonna be a solid outing. Yeah. I mean, we lost quite a bit of money because we bought the license. Mm -hmm. Let's see here. Whoa! Sales dipped. Yeah, they did not. They had one solid week and then took a hit. But uh, I think that's because the jump was higher. Like, we're on the verge of selling 30,000 units, and I don't know that we've hit that before. Yeah, if we look at the game history, we can see that we spent 64k on the game, and we've already made 200. So it's definitely a big success. Now that 64 obviously does not include the dev cost or I mean the uh, the, the license. license yeah but see it's already made more than High Joust did and Joust was pretty successful worth pointing out we're in our second year yeah second year seven months yeah we're not even just starting off the second year so we're doing pretty good not bad for a guy in his garage no with the name Philsoft as a company but um but I think uh, we're going to have to cut this one short. Make sure you um, subscribe, like, and comment, especially if you like this series um, and you want to see more of these videos. Uh, make sure you jump on that so that we know what you like. But in the meantime, I'm Chris. And I'm Dan. And we will see you later. Peace.